everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're just gonna be doing a live coding session of me practicing for some interview questions using TypeScript. This is all gonna be live, how I'd probably do it uh, in my study sessions and in a live interview. Um, so yeah, hopefully this is useful. All right, so first let's see what we need to do here. Make a little comment block here um, and let's see what they're giving us. So let's read the question. A binary string is monotone increasing if it consists of some numbers of zeros, possibly none followed by some numbers of ones. So we're given a string of ones and zeros and the goal is to find minimum flips needed to make s monotone increasing. And monotone increasing means that basically zeros to left ones to right. Um, and this is like this. Okay. Um, so do we have any sub problems here? Well, one is like, of course, like finding optimal uh, flip point, right? Because basically we could try, basically anywhere is a valid flip point because it's saying that we can flip from zero to one or one to zero. Um, so a base available operations flip zero to one or one to zero. So we could we could actually do that anywhere in the array and create a, um, you know, valid end string here. Um, so the question now is how do we actually find an optimal flip point for this? Um, and how might we do this? So just off the top of my head, I'm thinking that like, there's actually not much information that we need to keep track of, right? We basically only need to know how many flips would be required to turn the right side ones and the left side zeros. So I'm actually thinking, could we basically keep track of flips needed um, to left and right, find min of those? Um, and so here's how we might do something like this, is we might say that, um, let's see, we want zeros on the left. So basically we could say, keep track of uh, basically ones to left, um, which is basically the same as flips needed left. Um, and then we could keep track of zeros, zeros to right. And this is flips needed right. Um, and then I'm thinking what we could do is we could actually just like iterate over array um, and then we'll say something like minimum flips found um, equals to and we'll just set it to like s dot length or something so the max if we had to flip everything and then we'll say uh, minimum flips found equals to math dot min of like ones to left, zeros to right, like that. Um, so that's how we're keeping, as we iterate over the array, what is the minimum we found that we would need to flip at any one point? Um, and then basically what we'd say is like, you know, current value equals to, you know, whatever the current value is. And then we'll just like, if, um, if it's a one, then we need to say that if it's a one, then we need to say that one's to left increases because we've, we've, we've moved up. And so now there's a one that's like past our little boundary. And so we're saying, Hey, there's a one we just saw, we need to record that. Um, but if it's a zero, then it's now moved from the right to the left. And now we got to say something like, um, zeros to right minus minus. Um, yeah, I, I think this is like pretty good and let's just like check ourselves real fast. So what, what's the best we could possibly do this in? Um, because we're this, we're basically trying to understand what is in in array, that means we actually need to look at every element once. So the best we could hope for is an O of N solution. Um, and then if we look at this, which is finding an optimal flip point, keeping track of this is actually O of N of one, because we're only using, we only go through the array, uh, actually maybe a few times. Um, so ones to left would equal to zero to start um, and zeros to right, this would need to be O of N because we would, we would check this basically. But this is O of N, um, this is O of N, um, and this is just a constant amount of uh, operations. And so this all amortizes out to O of 
code in, and then we only have one or constant really memory because we're only using a few variables um, here, and it's a constant amount of variables throughout. Um, so this is pretty good, and this is probably the best we could hope for, right? Like it might be a slightly faster thing, but the bound can't be better than the best we could get. Um, and it's really hard to get better than constant. We can't really get better than constant. Of course, we could maybe save some memory in some of the, the variables we have, but that's that's pretty good. And so as we think of like options to solve this. Um, I think that a is basically just um, use sub a dot one. So the answer to um, this is, is probably what we'll do because it it's the best we could even theoretically get. So it, it's going to be hard to get a better one than this. Um, yeah, I, I think this is right. So let's just check. Yeah, we know that um, s is at least length one, which is good. It's either zero or one. So I think uh, this is pretty decent for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let us check this. Um, all right, so the first thing we need to do is count zeros to right. And so what we might do is something like um, count uh, cares and string or something like this. And we might get an S of string target is string like this. Um, this will return a number and we'll use this to actually just count the zeros. Um, but we'll just say basically, let uh, count equals to zero, and then we'll just iterate over it. And so we'll just say for, you know, let i equals to zero, i is less than s dot length, i plus plus. Um, we'll say const current character equals to s at i, and then we'll just say if current character um, is equal to the target that we're looking for, um, then we'll say count plus plus, and then we'll return count. Um, so this is what we've got for this. And so this is how we're doing the zeros to right count. Uh, and then is there anything else we need to do? Nope, everything's pretty simple. All right, okay, so let's just build this. So we'll say, um, let ones to left count uh, equals to zero. Um, we'll say let zeros to right count equals to uh, count cares in string s of uh, we're looking for zeros. Um, so we've gotten that. And now we just need to say, hey, let minimum flips found equals to s dot length. So this is if we had to flip everything. Um, so this is the max it could ever be. We're just using this as basically a sentinel value to start this off at. Um, and now we're going to iterate over the array. So basically what we're going to say is, um, see, do we need the index? No, we don't even need the index. So we'll just do s dot for each. Uh, I think we can do this. I actually need to check this uh, if we can do a for each on a string. I'm actually thinking we can't do that. Uh, yeah, it doesn't love that. So let's let's just do a normal for loop. Um, for let i equals to zero, i less than s dot length, i plus plus. Um, we're gonna say, hey, const current character again, you know, equals to s of i. Um, and then basically we need to say, hey, minimum flips found equals to math dot min of ones to left count, uh, zeros to right count. Um, because at this position, we wanna just record this. And now we're gonna change this as we go. So um, we're gonna basically say, hey, if the current character uh, is equal to zero, um, then we know that we've just gotten a zero from the right side uh, to the left side. And so now it's no longer to the right and it's now to the left, which is okay. That doesn't count as a flip. And so we're gonna say zero is to right count minus minus. Um, else, and this is where we might do like an else if, uh, let's see. Maybe do direct equality check in case some more than zero one values. Um, so if we were doing production code, we might do this and throw if it's like a trash um, kind of value. But for now, we just we know this is a one, um, and so it must be a one. So we're just gonna say, hey, ones to left count plus plus increment that guy um, because uh, a one basically just came from from the right side where we didn't need to flip to the left side of our barrier um, where it will need to flip, and so we just need to make sure that we're keeping track of this. Um, and so at this point, you know, we've we're iterating through the whole thing. Um, we are updating the minimum flips we found at each like partition uh, possible possibility. We are based on the values that are going from right to left, updating the counts uh, of that partition on each side of the partition. Um, and then once we've done that, theoretically, we will have found the minimum. And so we can return minimum flips pound. Return minimum 
flips found. Um, and so I think theoretically this is correct. Uh, I like to just like walk over it to make sure it makes sense though um, to start. And so what we're trying to do is basically as we go through this, keeping track of the flips needed left and right, um, flips needed on the left is basically just the number of ones that are to the left of our partition. Uh, the flips needed on the right are just the zeros to the right of our partition um, because we want all zeros on left, all ones on right. So that makes sense. Um, and then we're just iterating over it, seeing how many flips are currently required for this partition and then moving our partition and just updating uh, based on what's on the left and right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think this is okay. I'm a little worried about this because we're just, are we updating the partition correctly? Um, basically when we're doing minimum flips found, we're checking the partition before us. And so just to make this clearer, I'm gonna flip this because I think it's just a little bit easier to read um, what we're doing here. So the, we're basically at the partitions to the left, we're doing this and then we're saying, hey, this character, let's check for the character, change it, and then the partition will be on the right here. Mm -hmm. I think that's okay. The one case I'm looking at is issues is basically, we're checking the value uh, only when we're within the length. And so we're starting when the partition's like zero, like before the zeroth element, but that means we won't actually check it. The one case is like, if it's all zeros, we're not actually checking that last case, right? Um, um, and so I also think I need to check the case where if they're all ones or the case where they're all zeros and we're checking that very last guy. Um, so let's let's do that as well. Um, so let's just say const uh, uh, do, 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 all ones count um, equals to, and this is why it's useful to have this little generalized function to help us of one. Um, and basically we're saying, you know, let's check how many ones are in this. And if there's zero ones in it, then that means it's a thing of all zeros. And then for that very last one that we didn't check, that last partition, which is at the end of the array, um, we can just say that that's it. So, so if they're all zeros, this will be zero. And then the minimum flips we actually need is zero. So then we can say, you know, just minimum flips found again is going to equal to uh, this. Oh, and this is actually wrong, um, right? This needs to be minimum flips found all ones count. And then this actually needs to be added to each other, right? So this is zeros to right count, ones to left count, plus zeros to right count, minimum flips count. So this is how we're keeping the track of the minimum thing that we found is just the minimum of the minimum we found um, plus the new version, which is ones to left and zeros to right is the number of flips you need. Okay, good thing we checked this because um, we had a few things that were wrong here. Um. All right, I think this makes sense. Let's kind of run it um, because we are here in this and see what the, the original test cases say. All right, so it says like we're pretty good um, on these simple test cases. You know, there's maybe a few other test cases that, that we could try like uh, empty string or just one and zero kind of thing. Um, but let's see, can we even do that? Oh, we can add some test cases. Case four is like, what if it's just a zero? Case five, what if it's just a one? Okay, what if we did that? Case four, zero output. Okay, great. So I think it's pretty good on edge cases. Let's just submit it and see where we get. All right, not the fastest thing in the world. Um, probably because we're doing these extra O of N's uh, checks here. Like this is an N check. Um, this is an N check here, but I think it's pretty simple, pretty complete. Um, so yeah. All right, so how would I rate myself on this? Uh, this took us about 18 and a half minutes for a medium question on leak code. I would say that's pretty decent for, for mediums. I definitely wanna finish in about 20 minutes. Um, we didn't really have any huge red flags here. Uh, we're able to catch most bugs pretty pretty easily. Um, we Our code is pretty simple. And then we are able to get an algorithm that um, approximates the best theoretical algorithm we could have. And so that that's also points um, with zero red flags. So I'd say that this is a pretty general uh, solid pass, even if it's not like perfect. Perfect. Um, yeah, solid pass. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions in the bottom to make these kind of live coding things more interesting or anything, or if you have suggestions on how to make this code better. Um, always interesting to see how other people code stuff like this. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.